Good Tuesday morning to you. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. This weather video is driven by 802cars.com, representing 802 Toyota, Twin City Subaru, and 802 Honda. They're all located off of Exit 7 on Interstate 89. Looking at the Northern Hemisphere, this is the uh, Polar Arctic region. Greenland, of course, Northern Canada. And Vermont is down here, signified by the green colors. Kind of a chilly morning, frosty morning this morning. And uh, we have a colder air. It's uh, starting to work across Canada and into parts of Montana and the uh, northern Rockies and certainly across the Canadian Rockies. Not that much cold air in Alaska, but a lot of cold air in this particular area here. And, of course, advancing through Siberia. This is what we're going to concentrate on. This is all things snow. So looking at a little bit of climatology. This is uh, back on the uh, 21st of September. This is typically what we find in terms of snow cover. And you can see the percentages here. Greenland, very high share of snow, obviously uh, snow covered and glaciated. And then in northern parts of uh, Siberia, we start to see snow advance. So this uh, is a weekly guide. So uh, our next uh, date here, October the 1st, you can see a little bit of an advance. October the 11th, today's date, you can see the advance across Siberia as well as the northern parts of Alaska and into uh, mainly northern and western Canada, Baffin Island region and so forth. And then looking at uh, the next step here, the 21st, you can see that snow advance. And uh, finally the 31st of October, and uh, it's the snow advancement index uh, developed by Judah Cohen of AER that uh, can correlate what may happen to the polar regions in terms of the polar vortex and how this may weaken the polar vortex later on this winter and allow for colder air to circulate around 45 north latitude. That dump of colder air may also interfere or affect the North Atlantic Oscillation and uh, we might see um, better storm track uh, this year for snow. So from the Global Snow Lab we can see where the snow is currently, this kind of open areas, kind of a mixture here. Uh, it is filling in across a good section of northern Canada and across Siberia. Notice the uh, lack of snow toward uh, Finland and Scandinavia. A little early for that perhaps, but uh, this is the area that typically advances and fills in. We have open ocean as well, open Arctic, no ice here. And uh, that is definitely affecting the setup of an area of higher pressure. And then in terms of uh, downrange, a trough of lower pressure, that uh, is bringing colder air into Siberia and the snow advancement. So this is the snow um, analyzed uh, at surface uh, currently from the GFS model and uh, kind of zooming in on this here a little bit better here. This is our current snows that just uh, gotten as far south as Yellowstone country and of course that extends up in the parts of Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan and we do have some snow cover uh, that's starting to uh, hold on here and stick. This is mainly mountain snow cover over toward Whistler and uh, those are higher elevations of the uh, coastal range of uh, British Columbia and of course up into Canada. Note that there's sort of an area there that has not been receiving a whole lot of snow but if you head further to the north a lot of this area is covered by snow here. This is the Brooks Range in Alaska. Note that uh, open areas around Fairbanks. This is uh, going to be increasing uh, soon, I would think. Now, what we're really looking at, though, is over here in Siberia. And what I want to show you is how much snow there is. And these areas here in this uh, typical mountains here near Lake Bacall, um, there are pretty healthy snowfalls, uh, snow depths, uh, better than uh, 25 inches in a lot of places. There was a couple spots here up around 31 inches. There you go, 39. Okay, let's hit a couple here. So uh, pretty healthy amounts of snowfall uh, across this particular area. And then, of course, uh, in the Barren, Barrens and uh, Kara Seas, uh, open ice and high pressure here, tropical pressure here and so forth. So uh, it is working in our favor if we have the snow advancement index indicating that we're going to see a perturbed stratospheric polar vortex, which then will perturb the polar vortex in the troposphere where weather is made, 
and that will release colder air later on in the season. That's the theory. So taking a look at departures from normal, uh, lack of snow in Alaska, uh, the eastern tip of uh, extreme Asia, Siberia, and we have a fair amount of snow here. This is kind of near normal. This is a little bit above normal in those mountains I just showed you. And then near the Barents Kara Sea, we have below normal snowfall here. And incidentally, we have um, low normal snowfall around uh, northern Sweden, Finland, and extreme northern Scandinavia. And uh, nothing being shown right now in the Rockies, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the Alps, uh, a little bit below normal in the Himalayas. That's it. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights.